Hey there, fellows. It's been a while since we've done a brake system experiment. I got a hold of some old-fashioned pads, and an idea occurred to me. Now, the friction material in older pads would have copper or brass added to it, just a little bit to prevent the rotors from wearing out prematurely. Incidentally, I found this here copper plate. We also have a bit of aluminum. So let's make us some brake pads from copper and aluminum and then go try them out. Let's do this. Aluminum versus copper brake pads, which are better? Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. Okay, so we've removed the brake rotors, and if I'm being completely honest with you, they have seen better days. We assumed they'd ruin our fresh new brake pads, and so we've gone ahead and slapped on a different set of rotors. We've machined them, it's all looking good, and here we have the pads themselves. That's the copper friction surface. Now instead of gluing them on, we opted to drill holes, tap thread, and screw them on. We've done that for both the copper and the aluminum pads. They are totally identical. And now we assemble everything and head out to the test track. Let's do this. So here we are out on the test track. We've decided to start by using the pads with aluminum friction material. We're pretty much good to go, so now let's... Let's try them out. Hop in, start the car, and drive off. What do you guys think? Are they gonna work? Let's find out. I'll get up to... a fairly decent speed... right away. And now? Wait, what? What was that all about? Let me just... Man, as soon as I... lightly touched the pedal... Man, they have some bite. I did not expect that to happen. I mean, for real? The lightest, gentlest application of the brakes. And the car starts braking as if I were pressing the pedal quite hard. That aluminum is really something. I did not expect that. It's as if... I don't know, this has some sort of electric booster or something. The factory brakes do not work in the same way. Wow! 
Like I was barely even touching the pedal. But that's enough to lock the wheels up. They really have some bite. I mean, how is it that they work like that? As soon as you give it even the slightest push... I was barely pressing down on the pedal in order to ensure the wheels aren't locked up for too long. Okay, so I came to a stop right before that line after the cones. Let's try that again. You know what it did? I felt a jolt, and the wheels locked up. Now, aluminum is quite soft, and this particular sort we even used for welding. It's nice and soft, it barely contains any duralumin. I suspect it might have been sticking to the brake rotor. Yeah, I reckon that's what we were dealing with out there. Okay, well, I'm going to continue driving and see what happens in terms of whether the aluminum will fuse to the iron. Check this out, guys. What we suspected turned out to be true. Just as we thought, this aluminum... Damn, that's hot. Anyway, so it's very soft and it has taken a beating. It's taking a while for it to cool off. Isn't aluminum supposed to cool quickly? That is really hot. So at the end of the day, with how soft it is, we're seeing rapid wear. Now, the rotor was resurfaced. Clearly some material has fused to it, and that accelerated the wear even further, to the point where it's even being pulled over the holes we made for the bolts. They're pretty much disappearing at this point, with how soft this aluminum is. Yeah, look at that. I mean, if you found yourself in a desperate situation, you are going to make it back home, but you might have to do a full brake system service when you get back. Now, looking at this rotor, apparently, yeah, there's some material fused to it. Take a look at that. It is fairly easy to remove, though. It's pretty loose. Yeah, removing it is easy enough. Okay, so we've seen the aluminum pads in action. Now we just need to remove the rotors, clean them, and throw in them copper pads. Okay, let's replace these and see what happens when you use copper friction material. Let's do this. All right, so we've removed the aluminum brake pads and now we're running copper ones. We've cleaned the rotors, of course, and now it's time for us to do some testing. We'll see how effective these copper pads are. They might behave the same, but not necessarily. We're all about to find out. Let's get to it. Oh, I forgot to pump the brake pedal back there. Okay, so they do work, but they feel totally different compared to the aluminum. 
It doesn't feel like the copper is sticking as much to the brake rotors. Yeah, I'm having to press the brake pedal like you would on your normal sort of brake pads. I can hear them squealing. Yeah, you gotta... They are really squeaky. Otherwise, we're looking good. They're almost conventional. We machined the rotors. Everything should be on point. This is much more pleasant. And way more predictable. The stopping power... depends on how hard you're pressing the brake pedal. It's very linear. I feel like I've just broken something. Judging by the sound. Nothing broken here. And this also looks okay. I came to a stop at about... the same spot as with the aluminum pads. Though these are way more pleasant to use. Let's try that again. Okay, not bad. These are quite effective. Doesn't affect whether they squeak. It doesn't matter if you're going fast or slow. They're still gonna squeak. You heard that. So you install them, and at some point they start singing. You know, I have a feeling that copper pads, as long as you don't take them to the point where you've locked the wheels, they make for a shorter stopping distance. I mean, the difference might be a mere 70 to 80 centimeters, but these are more effective, I reckon. And that's a good thing. Why'd Sergey drive so far away? Okay, so check this out. First of all, I'm sure you noticed. Yeah, these also get really freaking hot. Upper is supposed to cool off fairly quickly, but in this case it's taking a while. They were getting really hot. I don't see any copper on the rotor though. It doesn't stick to it, which is quite nice. They were behaving very differently. With the aluminum pads, all you had to do was gently touch the pedal. And that was enough for the brakes to bite down... Well, pretty hard. They were tenacious, man. But then it started fusing to the rotor. So the way I see it, aluminum melts at a much lower temperature compared to copper. It was getting extremely hot. The part of it that was touching the brake rotor, I mean. And it was happening really fast. It was getting up to a temperature where it would liquefy. And stick to the iron surface of the brake rotor. And that's the reason why they were so quick to wear out. In my opinion, it's all down to the fact that... 
The thing is that aluminum doesn't assume an amorphous state, meaning it's either hard or it's liquid. Apparently, in our case, it was melting and sticking to the rotor. The copper, on the other hand, did not behave that way. These haven't been worn down quite as severely, though they have taken some punishment. The copper is barely even overlapping the bolt holes. Yeah, they're about where they used to be. I mean, there is a tiny bit of deformation, but it isn't nearly as bad as on the aluminum pads. Not even close. As for how these copper pads... As for how they behaved, well... They were noticeably closer to stock brake pads. Of the type you'd actually be running on a car. They felt very similar. The brakes were considerably easier to modulate. They give you as much stopping power as you ask for. The brake pedal action was much, much smoother. Yeah, they were actually pretty good. The aluminum, not so much. So there you have it, fellows. This was quite a curious experiment. We were honestly expecting it to go a bit differently. We thought the copper would also fuse to the rotor, but that was not the case at all. It actually turned out to be rather effective. And you got predictable behavior, just like on a stock pad. And that's all I got for you. Watch us, subscribe, send in your suggestions, comment, give us a big thumbs up. All right, catch you later.